Do you think navigation Jetpack Compose is already good enough? Well, you could just rebuild it from scratch and it changes everything. Forget the old navigation controller limitation. Now you own the back stack. It's just Compose state. Adaptive layout are finally simple. Custom transitions are easy and multiple screens are built in. But here's the twist. This isn't a small update. This is a whole new way to think about navigation in Compose. And if you learn it now, you will be miles ahead. In this video, I'll show you exactly why Navigation 3 was created, the problem it solves, and we'll be building a working example together. So grab your coffee, hit that like button, and subscribe, and let's dive into Navigation 3. Because once you try it, you'll never want to go back. Okay, so before we get started, you can get the project through GitHub. The link will be provided in the link in the description box below. So for this case, you can just see I have added several screens so that they can aid us through the navigation. So I don't want to tire you writing some uh, codes that are not necessary. So this video is going to be purely focused on navigation only. So here you can see we have uh, this screen. So you can see just a simple compose uh, code. And also we have a note that is the note that we are going to be using and transferring. And here we have just the dummy notes that we're going to have basically. So one important thing is that we have to add the versions for this and you can just copy them directly. So you can still have added this navigation, the life cycle, and also the country serialization. So this one are going to be accessory when we want to use this. And at this particular adaptive layout is going to be optional if you want to actually add this. And basically you're about to go through this. So you can see I'm using this under the developer. So I'm going to provide the link of this link down below so that you can just go and copy this. So you can copy this and paste it in your version cabinet so that you can get started. And according to this video, right now, the time of recording, we, we are still in alpha, but, but later versions are going to have better and other things. So you, you have to visit through this documentation to see if it's worth to change. So I'm going to link in the description box below here. So you can see when you go to get started, you have to next set up this. And also you have to make the compile SDK to actually compile to data six. And after that, then you can uh, put in the serialization. I'm telling for uh, serialization because you're going to use for serialization and then you can add these libraries. So if you did the project directly from the uh, GitHub, basically I'm going to have everything set up for you. So for that case, let's get started. Okay, now let's read here yeah, a new thing class of file. So we're going to select coding class. And basically, I'm just going to call this navigation. Okay, so here we are going to define uh, routes as uh, before. So these routes are not similar to how we did before in navigation too. But this one are going to be keys that can be used to identify between different types. So as simple as this, you can just create, for example, a data object. And for example, let's create this for our home. And also we have another destination. So for example, add an X note and also the details. So you can see we have three navigations item. So we have the home, we have the and edit note, and also we have the detail. But for the, for example, for the detail here, we want to have an ID when we are going to pass here. So we can create the other note ID as simple as that. Also here, let's remove this object. Let's create just a data class. So here, like here, let's make this data class. And for a case, we want to get the note ID, but for now, this one is going to be nullable because sometimes we're going just to uh, add a new note. So we want this to be nullable so that we can just say, hey, now we are adding a new note and not updating a new note. So if we are updating, then we're going to supply a note ID so that we can just populate the data with our uh, configurations item. Okay, so for this case, we can just create here a new composable class uh, function. And for the composable function, let's just call this my. Okay, so the major difference here is that we are not going to use the nav controller. Now we own the back stack, and the back stack can be anything, can be stored anywhere. But for simplicity, we just going to use a simple state that we can keep it. So for example, let's just call here the back stack. So now we can just uh, create here a normal state. Okay, so now here we have our back stack. So you can see we have created a new table straight list of any. And now here we are allowing anything to be stored inside here. So later we're going to see how we can make this type safe. 
So for now, let's just see how simple to be to actually have a navigation system. So now we have our back stack. We can keep it anywhere or we can hoist it uh, from the composable corner or anything else. Another case is we can create, for example, the nodes state. Let's pass in here our dummy nodes. Okay, so previously we used enough O's in order to post here and call the composable. But for now, we are going to use the enough display. So this is the new uh, boy inside here, our navigation world. So we can just call here nav display. And nav display has several things. So when you hover around here, Okay, so here we have the documentation. So you can see this is just going to be another composable. So we have the nav display. You can see we have several parameters. Among them is just the back stack. So you can see we can pass in here. And this one is going to be a generic one, which we can pass any type of list. And actually we have uh, several things. So you can see we can enter the uh, back stack. And also we have new uh, items, which are called the decorators. So we put to speak decorators in later videos and see. And also have the skin strategies. So we can use this, uh, for example, now we are using the single uh, pen or scene strategy. So we can just use a single scene. For example, if you want to have multi pen strings, then you can try to use a different strategy here. We have animations, so we can have transition, we have with transactions and different things, which we have a lot here. So we're going to discuss more when we progress through. Another the important thing is when a pull press the phone back, what do we want to do actually? We want to pop up the lattices that is going to be inside our backstack. So we can case it to this called uh, backstack and call it people last on now. So basically, if we have a screen inside our stack or we have a difference inside our backstack, basically we can just remove it. So we don't store content, but we only store uh, actually the, the items which we are going to have is the difference of those particular items. Okay, so another case is we can pass in the, the actually the entry provider. So this one is going to be the last item, which is actually needed. And here basically we have the key. Okay, so now here we can use our wind statement. And instead here we can define the key and actually use the wind statement to actually decide which screen you are going to show right now. So for example, we can check is this a home screen. So let's check here. This is the home screen. And now we have to show the nav entry. Now here we can define if this is going to be our home screen or anything else. Okay, so let's remove these error lines and basically we can just use an else. Okay, so now here we have our home screen. So we can define, let's call here our hub screen. Now let's call here on up click, for example. Okay, so whenever we pick the floating action button, what do we want to do? So, for example, we want to navigate to our other screen. So, for this case, we can just call here our back stack because it's just a simple list. We can just call add here. And what do we want to add here is the add edit not. Okay, let's specify all argument. So, here we can just pass in the modifier, it's the default parameter. And basically, when we have the not click, we're going to receive the ID because here we're going to receive the ID or that not item that is going to be clicked. So for this case, we can just call here backstack and call add. And here we can add, as you guess, we are going to go to the detailed screen, for example. This is called the detailed screen, and we have to pass in here the ID. A simple, sorry, the detailed screen is just the detail we called. Now uh, let's pass in here the not ID. And so we can just call it the not the states. Now the next case is we can use the wing statement again to decide if we have another item. So we can say for example is detail. So here we can directly use the key because we're going to reset this as a parameter so that you can pass in here the not ID directly. It's called here the modifier, passing here the modifier, it's passing here the nodes. All right, so we can just call our nodes state dot value. Okay, now we have the detail this piece. The last screen which we have, for example, you can just call here is and Passing the not D. 
sort of not ID, this one which is it's called here P dot not ID, which can be nullable. So we can handle this through our uh, head is not the screen. And here we can pass a list of it, and that is going to be the not. Okay, so we just append it here. You can use root and I then anything else is going to work. But for us, this one is going to be easier. Okay, now we can just call back scan because we have only the save the item. Now we can navigate back. So for this case, we can just call here back stack dot remove last of now so that we can navigate back. And when you remember, when we're using the enough control, we recall the pop back stack. So for this, we're just going to use with last on now in order to navigate back. And thus, we have here a node, so we're going to just write this simple logic. If we have any node, we can try to update it, and if not, then we can just return the same node. Okay, so this is the case, and after that, we can just remove the back stuff so that we can navigate back. Okay, now what if we navigate to a key that is not available? So for this case, we can just throw an error to let us know, or you can handle it, otherwise, how we want to know. So for our case, we know that we have the unknown route all the person and non route non route and then we all can do what anything does here so this is not supposed to actually happen so as simple as this here we have a navigation system in place okay so for our case let's just go to our activity and we have to pass in the inner part in the so it's called the modifier okay so Let's make sure instead of buying a deviation, all screens are used to the modic car. Okay, so our application is actually launched successfully. And here you can see we have it. So now let's try to click here, for example, to a node. You can see we are navigating successfully. Let's try to click a back button, and actually we are navigating also. Let's click here, new. You can see we have here new content. So you can just type here. Link. Let's type here anything. Let's click save note. And you can see our new note is that here. Let's click here back button. So all of the navigations are actually working perfectly. So this is just the basic of navigations. And there are different things which you can do. For example, you can use sims, you can use different strategies in order to make your navigation more suited to your custom application. Okay, so we have seen how we can easily create our navigation using the navigation tree. So I want to show you one thing that is going to be easier. So instead of checking via the using the when statement and also constructing another entry every time you want to use a set of key. However, you can easily use a simpler uh, item that is going to help you. So let's just, for example, copy all of this. So instead, we can use here the entry provider. Let's just call the entry provider directly, and we can open up the Lambda function. So here we are going to use the DSL uh, syntax, which is going to be easier. And for this case, we can just call here an entry because we have the entry provider open. So we can just create an entry and pass it in here the content. Or this is going to be a certain type. So for example, let's just post it here. And then we're going to go for this one. Okay, so this one is going to be our entry. So the first item, for example, we can just call this uh, and pass in here our own item. Okay, so the entry is going to be used to define another entry with the given type and the composable content, which we have actually defined. So it's also accept other metadata, which we can try to actually have it. And actually, by default, it has a fallback behavior. So it's going to throw an error if that particular key is not going to be found. Okay, so we can try to add other entries. So let's use here yeah, this. Now let's use the detail. 
similarly, let's just copy this. Okay, so as simple as this, you can see now our uh, navigation item is actually neatly organized. So we can use the entry provider here directly and actually use the entry to actually provide the navigation item. So we can use here, for example, we have copied this to home. So instead of using a word statement, so this one is going to be easier and it's going to work similar as how we did before. So let's try to rerun again and see the changes we have made. Okay, now let's start here. Let's, okay, now yes. Test our navigation and see it actually was similar as how we did before. Let's click here about navigation and it is navigating, and we can see everything is working as how we did before. So, we can see we are just storing here our state. So, let's just let it go to our device here. You can see right now, let's navigate directly here to our edit node. So, you can see here we're going to edit our node. But when we try to rotate here, you can see we are navigating back because our state is actually lost and changing our configuration. Actually, our navigation is going to be lost. So for this case, we have to ensure navigation state assist across various lifecycle events, including configuration changes which we have made or event process that is going to be crucial for good user experiences. So in navigation clinic, you own the back stack. So there is no limitation of where you're going to store your states. So as how we did here, we made it as simple as just that state, but you can try to save it using a convenience method that uh, navigation three actually provide. And that is called remember nav back stack. So this even is going to be a composable function that is designed to create a back stack and persist across configuration changes and process that. For the function for the remember navigation back stack to actually function correctly, so each key in your back stack must adhere to specific requirements. So let's see how we can easily do this. And what we can try to do is make first at serializable. Okay, so our object is now serializable. And then we have to make this to actually uh, implement the navigation key interface, which is this one. So let's do this to the rest. Okay, so now we have adhered to those. So we can try to change here our state and actually use the back stack directly. So instead of using the member, okay, so we have here enough back stack and we have to provide like the entry point. So our entry point is going to be home directly. Okay, so that is going to be our first item and the rest is going to remain similar as how we did before. So let's try to rerun again and see if our navigation still works the same. Okay, so now our application is actually launched successfully. Let's try to click here the navigation. You can see it's working as similar as how we did before. Let's click here and right click it's working perfectly. No problem. Okay, now let's try to rotate again. Okay, so now you can see we're still keeping our configurations and it's remaining similar to how we did before. And that's your first look at Navigation 3 in Jepa Compose, a completely new compose first way to manage navigations. Now you know why it exists, how it's different, and how to get started in your own project. But here's where it gets really fun. Navigation 3 has a powerful feature called the scenes. They let you build custom layouts, multiple UIs, and add slick animation that make your app feel alive. So in the next video, we're going to create a fully custom layout using Navigation 3 scenes. And I'll walk you through adding animations step by step. I'll see you there. Let's keep building.